Please stand as you are able. Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Wednesday, September 30th, the day when the church remembers Jerome, priest and monk of Bethlehem. Our service begins on the front page of your bulletin. You may also find the bulletin and the link in the description if you're watching on our Facebook feed. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, O God of truth, your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. We give you thanks for your servant Jerome and those who, following in his steps, have labored to render the holy scriptures in the language of the people. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will overshadow us as we read the written word, and that Christ, the living word, will transform us according to your righteous will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Old Testament from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with, a cho with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewn out, of, out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed. It shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. And let us read responsibly by half verse a portion of Psalm 80, which can be found on page 3 in your bulletin. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. 
You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, Look down from heaven. Behold and tend this bond. Preserve what your right hand has planted. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated.
As I mentioned earlier, today is the Feast of Jerome, and he was one of the foremost biblical scholars of the ancient church. His Latin translation of the Bible from the original Hebrew and Greek text became known as the Vulgate Version, along with his commentaries and homilies on uh, biblical books, made him a major intellectual force in the Western church. Jerome was born in the north Italian town of Striden about 347 and was converted and baptized during his student days in Rome. On a visit to Trier, he found himself attracted to the monastic life, which he tested in a brief but unhappy experience as a hermit in the desert of Syria. At Antioch in the year 378, he reluctantly allowed himself to be ordained a presbyter and there continued his studies in Hebrew and Greek. The following year, he was in Constantinople as a student of Gregory of Nazius. From 382 to 384, he was secretary to Pope Damasus I in Rome and spiritual director of many noble Roman ladies who were becoming interested in the monastic life. It was Damasus who sent him, back, sent him to the task of making a new translation of the Bible into Latin, the vulgar tongue as distinguished from the classical Greek, hence the name of his translation, the Vulgate. After the Pope's death, Jerome returned to the east and established a monastery at Bethlehem where he lived and worked until his death on September 30th, 420. He was buried in a chapel beneath the church of the Nativity near the traditional place of our Lord's birth. Jerome's disposition, pride of learning, and extravagant promotion of asceticism involved him in many bitter controversies over both theological and exegetical questions. Yet he was candidly at times in admitting, he was candid at times in admitting his failings and was never ambitious for churchly honors. A militant champion of orthodoxy, an indefatigable worker, and a stylist of rare gifts, Jerome was seldom pleasant, but at least he was never dull. And so today the church celebrates the Feast of Jerome. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and Victor, our priest, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. 
that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today we especially remember parish members and friends who are ill, infirm, or in need, including Car Colleen, Tony, Judy, Wayne and his family, Bill and Carolyn, David, Evelyn, Leo, Rob, Ben, Eleanor, Samuel, Matthew, Phil, Joan, Eloise, Pete, Mary and Scott, Loretta, Leonard, May, the Wirtz family, Michael, Nicholas, Rody, Elizabeth, Darlene, Roy, Jerry, Sally, Ernie, Stephen, and Joe. And for those we name with our lips or in our hearts, we pray for those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country, and for those who work for the safety of our communities and the security of our country. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember those in the Fellowship of the Faith, St. Luke's Church, Brownsville, St. Mark's Church, Lappins, and St. Paul's Church, Sharpsburg. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for our companion diocese of Puerto Rico and for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. We pray for our nation and for the upcoming election. O oh God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, relieve their pain, and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant to all who, in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them all, Lord Christ, from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort, and our only help in time of need. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace, and Christ's peace to all of you who are watching on our Facebook feed. Please be seated. Just one brief announcement. Uh, our evening prayer continues this evening at 7 p.m., as does our Bible study on the covenants. Um, so if you can join us tonight uh, and you'd like to join us for the Bible study, please email me and I will make sure that you get the link to the Zoom meeting. We'd love to see you there. Uh, just a reminder, we do have space available for our Sunday morning worship. Just please sign up on the link on our Facebook. Uh, website, which can be found in the link of the description of this video. Um, so please join us either in person or watch us uh, virtually on our Facebook feed. And with that, 
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand as you are able. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which can be found on page 361 if you're following along in a book of common prayer. It can also be found in, in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, 
do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. A prayer for spiritual communion for those who cannot be with us in person this morning. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. 
Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us say our post-communion prayer together. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.